Hey guys, you ever have that really annoying sound when you're gaming? It's just this really irritating buzzing in your ear. Well, that's called coil whine. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what causes it and how you can limit the effect of it. So let's have a closer look. So, hi guys, um, I was asked to do a video on this, so I'm going to do a video on this. So, coil wine is a term you often hear thrown around the PC forums um, and videos, but do any of us actually understand what it is fully? And, you know, and in knowing that, is there anything we can actually do to limit coil wine and the effect it has on gaming and things like that? And basically, coil wine, you know, all it is is an annoying buzzing sign that comes from an electronic device. Uh, and in the case of PC, enthusiast hardware and, and PC gaming, it's generally going to be your graphics card that's producing this coil line. Uh, like I said, it's an annoying buzzing sound and it sounds a bit like this. Yeah, pretty grim, isn't it? Um, so before we go any further, let's have a look at what coil wine actually is. <clears throat> so the hint is in the name. It's a wine that emanates from electromagnetic coils. Now these coils can be found in a wide range of electronics in the form of inductors, chokes and transformers. And guys, that's just a fraction of the electronic components that actually contain um, coils with a core. So if we look at inductors and chokes, you know, as these are found in abundance in PC hardware, you know, you, you'll always hear people talking about chokes and inductors and, and, and generally as part of the VRM and a GPU or a motherboard. So basically all an inductor or a choke is, is a coil of wire that's wrapped around a core. Now these cores can be lots of different materials and in the case of a ferrite choke, which are used um, extensively in motherboards and, and GPUs, the, the core is ferrite. Um, it can be other materials as well, like, you know, in times gone by they would use things like iron um, but essentially all that choke does, an inductor does something different, but all that choke will do is allow DC current to pass through it to the device that that choke is attached to, to you know, um, induct, like I say, inductor to do something, something slightly different, but the, the premise holds true in that these things are just coils of wires wrapped around a metal core, okay? That's all they are, they're really simple things. Now the sound is generated when a current is passed through that coiled wire causing an electromagnetic field to be generated around that core. The field in turn generates a force or an electromagnetic force and it's that force that causes the coil and the core to vibrate and generate a buzz or whine. Hence the term coil whine guys. So as you pass more current through the inductor or the choke then there is more vibration and therefore that, uh, that electronic device is going to make more noise, so you're going to hear more coil whine. Um, and in the case of a GPU, it will pull a variable amount of current depending on its workload. So, like, you know, if you're browsing the internet, it won't be pulling much current at all, so it'll be probably really, really quiet. But if you're gaming and your card's pulling, like, you know, over 150 watts and maybe 20, 25 amps, there's going to be a huge amount of coil whine because those coils are going to be vibrating like crazy. So now you know what it is, and it's, it's a really simple thing, like I say, you pass a current through a coil, um, you know, that has, that has a, a solid core of whatever material, and you create an electromagnetic force, and that in terms causes a vibration. That's the sound. So now you know what it is. Is there anything you can do um, to get rid of it or to limit it? Well, there's a few things that can be done to limit the amount of coil wine. But the thing is, once you've got a device or a piece of hardware that has coil wine, you're never going to get rid of it. So the first thing that can be done, and this is nothing you can do, and this is why I would say that if you, if you experience coil wine now, you'll never get rid of it, um, is the first thing that can be done is that it can, it can be addressed at the design stage of the product. So coil wine is generally caused by <clears throat> lower end components, basically being put on a PCB. I mean, for instance, a, an easy thing that a manufacturer can do is use a figure of eight shaped um, coil rather than the standard kind of tubular one where it's just wrapped around. And that actually will reduce coil wine, believe it or not. Um, so that's one thing that can be done. But like I said, guys, that's at the design stage um, and there's nothing you can do about that. So 
as I said earlier, if you've got something that's exhibiting coil wind now, you're not going to get rid of it because it's been built into that device at the design stage of it. Um, the next thing you can do, and I find this is actually really helpful, is just make sure you've got a high quality PSU. You know, if you've got a really low quality PSU that's sending out, you know, um, a, a sort of input voltage and current that's got lots of ripple in it to your device, then all that's going to happen is as that device ramps up, so it, it actually requires more power from your power supply, it's going to amplify that ripple that's in it um, and all that noise that's coming from the, you know, the, the kind of beginning of your power delivery system, your power supply, and that's going to cause coil wine. It's that simple. You know, if, you, if you're putting a really unclean voltage and current through your device, it's going to make that coil wine worse. So I would say, you know, if you've got a really bad coil wine problem, maybe just look at getting a slightly better piece of PSU. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about spending hundreds of pounds. I'm saying, you know, get something that's like at least bronze, uh, bronze level certified, at least 80 plus bronze. That's the minimum I would look at. Um, the next thing you can do, and this is really not going to be popular with people, is you can use a technology like B-Sync, FreeSync, or G-Sync. Now, the reason I say it's not going to be popular is because they're essentially going to cap your frame rate adaptively. So you're not going to get those huge like frame rates constantly. But what you are going to get is you're going to get a workload that is being managed between your monitor and your GPU so that your graphics card isn't just working hell for leather all the time. So in just doing that and just enabling one of those technologies, it's going to put less stress on your graphics card. Therefore, it's going to pull less current. So it's going to have less coil wine. And the other thing is, by enabling one of these technologies, you're going to get a better experience at the end of the day. I mean, I use G-Sync all the time and I think it's great. I couldn't, I couldn't game without it anymore. Um, I don't have screen tearing, I don't have stutter, I don't have these horrible points where things suddenly slow down and speed up. Um, so I, I, I say, yeah, I think that's win-win. Yeah, you'll take a frame rate hit, but not only will you reduce the amount of coil line you're experiencing, but you're probably also going to get a better experience at the end of the day um, gaming. And so guys, that's really it. Um, that's what coil line is. That's how you can reduce it. Like I say, if you've got coil wine, all you can really do is take steps to try and reduce it. You're never going to eliminate it because that wine is inbuilt to the system at the design phase. So unfortunately, if you've got coil wine, you're probably stuck with it. Um, I was thinking the other thing you could do, <laughs> which is a bit of a joke, is uh, you could put a full cover water block on that bad boy and that's probably going to block out a lot of the coil wine sound. But Again, that, there's a cost implication there. So I, I wouldn't advise you do that. That's more just for lols, but it would work. Um, in terms of RMAing your card for coil wine, it basically comes down to this. There are some companies that will accept a card being RMA'd for coil wine. You know, if you say it's unacceptable, they'll agree. Um, they might ask you to send the card back and test it, and the, you know, and that's great. But a lot of other companies will just say, no, we're not, re we're not replacing that card. There's nothing wrong with it. And the thing is, even if you get a new card, the chances are it's probably going to have coil wine as well, unless something fundamental has changed in the manufacturing of that card. Like, you know, if you got the card a year ago and then you're trying to RMA it now, um, you know, something might have changed in how they manufacture that card over that period. But the thing is, would you want to RMA a year old card? Probably not. You just go out and buy something new. But just to let you know that is an option and it, it's worth a try. You know, there, I'm not saying don't try it. So definitely try that. Um, and the last thing I want to touch on was something that the the actual requester of this video was asking me about. And he was experiencing coil line and he wasn't sure if it was his graphics card or or his sound card. And the one thing I will say is that any device, any electronic device out there that has either inductors, chokes, transformers, will have coil wine to one degree or another. <clears throat> now the reason I say that earlier in the video that it's going to be your GPU. If you have a look at the 780, I'm going to put a picture up of the 780 Ti. Now I've highlighted, I think it's the inductors in yellow and I, and I can't remember if it's a choke in red. It might be the other way around. But look at those things. They're all stacked closely together and there's a lot of them. Now, 
that's one reason GPUs suffer a lot from coil wine, because all these devices are in a really small space and they're stacked together. So they're all vibrating away like crazy beside each other, making a lot of noise. The other reason it's likely only to be your GPU is because that's probably the only device in your computer that when it's working at 100% is pulling like 25 amps, which is quite a lot of current to be pulling. And if you compare that to a sound card, which is the problem this person thought he had, you know, that sound card is probably pulling like, I don't know, what, two or three amps, maybe five amps and 10 watts. There is no way it has enough juice to make that much noise. So I would say if you've got sound problems, it's probably more likely a function of either a poor audio solution on your motherboard um, or possibly really poor cabling on the front panel header that goes into your motherboard. Um, so if, you, if you're experiencing coil wine, I'm pretty much guarantee you that it's gonna be the GPU that's the culprit, nothing else, guys. Well, guys, there we go, that's the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've gotten something out of it. I hope you understand coil wine a, better, a bit better now and the things you can do about it. Um, so yeah, if you like the cha if you like the channel, bloody hell. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Um, you know, I don't mind that. And guys, don't forget to comment. I love reading the comments, as you know. I try to answer as many of them. As you know, if you're a viewer, you'll know that, that I do try to answer them. And um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, you know, if you're enjoying the content, subscribe and keep coming back. You know, I'm open to ideas. And uh, catch you later in another great tech video. Bye now.